What I'm presenting today is the journey of foreign educated nurses integrating into the American healthcare workforce. I see, um, I took a metaphor of a package, you know, um, and a metaphor of somebody going on a journey. When you receive a package, you don't know what you're going to find inside. And that is exactly what it's like for foreign educated nurses when they, uh, they have a kind of idea of where they are going to, what they expect, but they also know that there are many unknowns that they have to travel through. Um, so when you have a package, you know you have a package, you don't know what is inside, <laughs> you know. And then when you're going on a journey, especially an unknown journey, you just know, okay, this is where I'm going, but you don't know what is, uh, you're going to meet along the way, you don't know what is going to happen when you get to where you're going to. Uh, uh, so that's exactly um, how uh, foreign educated nurses journey into American healthcare workforce system looks like. Background. So while we're talking about uh, foreign educated nurses uh, coming to work in America, uh, we all know that there's global nursing shortage. Uh, there's a lot of so uh, shortage. Uh, it goes on and off. Sometimes we think we have enough enough workforce, and at other times we experience a lot of shortage. Um, we all know that we are still predicting uh, further shortages of nurses, both as educators and as uh, workers in the hospital setting. So this is going to be with us for a very long time. Uh, and then uh, not only the, uh, have, do we have shortages here in America, we also have shortages all over the world of nurses. Um, nurses who come here uh, recruited from other countries. Also, uh, when you look at the countries where they come from, there's also shortage of nurses there because there's a lot of influx of foreign educated nurses to uh, developed countries. Uh, also, um, it's very personal to me too because I am an immigrant. I came from uh, Nigeria to come and work here. So um, I can tell a lot about what it means uh, to live one's country and to work in a foreign country. Um, and also, um, it's very important for us to know that we can learn a lot from a counterpart that comes to work here in America because uh, they bring a wealth of knowledge about how nursing is practiced in other parts of the world. They bring a lot of uh, insights and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge that we can share from. Uh, so it's very important uh, that we listen to them. So why? What is the purpose of this project? Is to increase understanding among healthcare providers. We need to understand. Uh, what are foreign, what foreign educated nurses uh, go through, uh, where they come from, how they think, and, uh, and how we can help them to successfully have a smooth working experience when they come into the United States. So, they, um, so it's important that we understand them. And then uh, we need to co-create change within and across organization. You know, when foreign educated nurses come into America, they, they bring, like I said earlier, a lot of knowledge that can help us uh, to, to uh, shape uh, the healthcare system uh, in America if we will learn from uh, the knowledge they bring. And also, uh, we need to humanize healthcare services. When we have a group of vulnerable people, um, Coming to work uh, in America, if we make them, if we make them feel at home, if we have, uh, if they have smooth uh, transition, it will translate into the care 
given to our uh, patients. Uh, so that's why it's very important that they have a smooth uh, transition. We need to eliminate uh, discrimination. And then we need to advocate uh, for group of vulnerable health workers, like I, I've said uh, earlier. And then um, there's a lot of literature gap about uh, the experiences of foreign educated nurses coming to work in America. Uh, the stories are told by others, not by them. You know, um, how people perceive them, what people think their problem is. But I went further in my uh, uh, project to interview uh, foreign educated nurses so that they can tell their experience themselves uh, and uh, what they think is going on, uh, what the journey is like for them. And uh, I have one of them here today, Mrs. Mbibi, can you raise up your hand? <laughs> That's the former president of the Nigerian Nurses Association, uh, in, uh, and also she's very much involved in the National Association of Nigerian Nurses in America and Canada. So she, she, uh, so she's representing uh, the Nigerian nurses here today. Uh, um, So theoretical guidance, I chose uh, Margaret Newman, uh, who's uh, as my uh, nurse theorist, who says that many and health are found in one's ever increasing capacity to understand and process information. I think that is very relevant uh, to foreign educated nurses because uh, there is the expanding consciousness. Like I stated earlier, when you're going in a journey, you just know you're going somewhere, but you don't know what you're going to meet there. You don't know what it's going to be like. But as they come here, they get to uh, they understand uh, uh, more about what it means to work in a foreign uh, country, which they didn't know before. So their, their consciousness is expanded, uh, their understanding is expanded as they interact with their environment. And we all know that when we interact with our environment, we impact our environment and our environment impacts us as we uh, interact. So what's the process of the journey? Um, I had to get an approval from IRB. Uh, I invited 10 foreign educated nurses uh, to participate in the project. I interviewed them, tape recorded it, and uh, um, organized uh, their response into teams. Uh, all were from Nigeria. All were from the same recruiter. Of course, you know, for you to come here, a lot of a lot of foreign educated nurses use uh, recruiters to recruit them to come here. So all were from the same recruiter except two. I, I interviewed two male nurses and eight female nurses. Age, age ranges from 38 years to 53 years. Uh, there was uh, I used semi-structured uh, uh, questions and then I recorded their responses. So, uh, what teams came out of these, um, of these uh, responses of the nurses? The purpose of coming to the US. I explored uh, with these nurses what their purpose is uh, coming to US, uh, what the experience is like for them. Uh, during recruitment and orientation, and then working and adapting to life in the United States. And also, we all know that there's social, legal, ethical, and economic ramifications of foreign educators coming to work in America. So, purpose of coming to the U.S., why do these nurses decide to come to work in the U.S.? Some came because of a marriage, Maybe the, the, uh, all, what, two of them came because of marriage, because their husband is here. Uh, so they had to come join their husband. Uh, so, and then when they came, they, uh, they had to work as foreign educated nurses in the United States. Encouragement of others. Some had 
lots of relations and friends and colleagues that were encouraging them to come and work in America. Um, fascination, a lot of a um, lot of them have watched movies about America and heard stories, so they became fascinated uh, with coming to work in America. Sense of, sense of adventure, a lot of them have traveled uh, to other places and uh, they feel, okay, maybe I need to come to America to do work. For example, one of the male nurses I interviewed has been to uh, has been in the military, has traveled to other West African countries uh, for uh, peacekeeping force uh, as, a, as, a, as a military personnel. Uh, improved technology. We all know that uh, all, uh, some countries are not as advanced in technology as we are in America here. So they want to work in a place where they, there is improved technology. Some want a good place for their children to grow. They, they are concerned about their children's education, their children's future. That's the most important thing to them uh, because sometimes they, uh, in other countries you have teachers on strike, students not being able to go to school for a certain period of time. So they want to be sure that there's future for their children. Um, and some, you know, they just they just want to visit places. Uh, and some, one of them describe it restlessness. Hmm. Recruitment <coughs> and orientation. What is it like for foreign educated nurses to come to America uh, to work? Recruitment. Uh, first of all, you have to pass uh, uh, a um, an exam, which is called uh, which is. Um, set up by the Commission on Graduate of Foreign Nursing, uh, of foreign nursing Schools. It's called CGFNS, Commission on, on Graduates of Foreign Nursing School. It's like the board exam that you take here. So some, some of these nurses, including me, have to travel to other countries to go and take this exam. You have to pay for it in dollars here, register to do it here, buy, American textbook to read and then you have to pass it then you have to pass test of spoken English and then you have to pass a test of English as a foreign language so when you pass all those three then you are given visa to come to the United States to work and that assures them that once you uh, pass your uh, once you get here you have to sit for the borders of the state uh, you come to so making another uh, your second uh, state board exam, and then they are sure that you are going to pass that exam. So I guess um, just stating this so that you know what it takes these nurses to come to work uh, in America, and again they have to pay the recruiters. Some recruiters are not genuine, so you pay some they don't do the work, and then they have uh, but eventually. Uh, for some of us, it took about eight years from processing to coming here, you know, from passing the exam, getting a recruiter, and then uh, processing uh, the permanent residency uh, to come to work in the United States. And then you have to pay the recruiter. In our case, some of, some of uh, the people, uh, some of us, um, what happened was that we paid the recruiter, and then the recruiter also got money from the nursing home that recruited us to work here. So it's like he's getting uh, double money, which raises the ethical issue of recruitment of foreign nurses coming to work uh, in America. And what's the orientation like? You, ha you have to make sure that you, you work for the organization that recruits you. And that means you have no time at all to prepare for the board exam the way you want to because they can't recruit you, I mean, they can't use you as an RN except you pass the board exam here, even though you pass the CJFNS exam. Uh, so, um, so that's what it's like. And then um, orientation, a lot of the nurses talked about the fact that the orientation is uh, so long, uh, so long, 
um, and some talked about it being shot, especially those who did not come through the recruiter. Uh, so once they come to the facility, they just orientate them. And we all know it takes a lot uh, to orientate a foreign educated nurse than those who are here because they are coming into a new uh, uh, work uh, culture. And again, another problem is with those who are orientating foreign educated nurses, a lot, a lot of the nurses complained that uh, to those who are orientating them, they never did well. You know, they kept putting uh, negative, re uh, telling, uh, giving <coughs> negative report about them until one of them said, you know what, is it that I'm done with this orientation or I'm done with being employed here? Uh, that was when they had choice like when we first came in here. So we can see how uh, complicated it can be when you're supposed to help somebody to settle down and you're the one reporting that person uh, for one reason or the other. Another problem is, especially those, uh, that, um, those that were not recruited by recruiter, even those who were, for, uh, for example, those who came like in, um, in relation to marriage, or oh, they came, uh, they started working as nurse assistant, nursing assistant, even though they were RN before coming here, even though they were, they were well educated. And now within six months, they came here, they passed the board, or maybe three months. And so the people they were working with were surprised. How can, how can she come become a nurse assistant in the next three months, become an RN? So that raised a lot of problems for them because they wanted them to keep being that nurse assistant. So, so they couldn't understand how because they, these people were already nurses. So they only came uh, here and worked as nurse assistant in order to uh, process their papers so that they can sit for the uh, board exam. So those are the problems uh, that these people uh, face when they come here. This is a picture of taken by the Nigerian Nurses Association. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of us are not there, but um, adapting to work in the United uh, States, there's culture shock uh, because uh, the work culture they have come into is different from the work culture of where they come from. Uh, the culture of reporting people, uh, you know, instead of you know talking directly to people uh, that you have issues with, is something that is totally uh, uh, that is totally uh, alien uh, to foreign educated nurses when they come to work in America, because they believe in if you somebody is doing something wrong or if there's any problem, talk to that person first. But here they discover that they don't even know that about anything until the thing has gone very far. And so they, are, uh, they don't know uh, what is going on. Uh, the work culture, the way people relate to them, uh, they felt discriminated. Uh, that uh, People feel if you're a foreign educated nurse, you don't know anything. You know, they, f uh, they feel discriminated against by patients and by their colleagues. Uh, especially in the area of uh, accent, you know. Uh, once people know you don't speak like them, then they just switch off. They just switch off. Uh, so a lot of them tell me, I can understand them. I take time to listen, to understand what they are saying. Why is it that it's only me they can't understand? Uh, the issue is not even not understanding them, but another issue is, uh, if you don't understand somebody, you can say, oh, please, can you repeat what you have said? Instead of thinking that person doesn't know what that person is doing. So they felt discriminated against. Some patients say they don't want them to care for them. And it's happened to not to one, not to two people, not once. They just say, once they come, oh, I have, uh, you are my uh, this, this is your nurse for today. I don't want her. I don't want him. So they felt very rejected uh, because of that. Technology, um, uh, computerized, uh, a lot of um, technology they had to get adjusted to. But once 
you they are able to be uh, they are taught they adjust uh, uh, easily documentation uh, computerized uh, chatting, quoting people, uh, so some of them find it very difficult. Uh, getting accepted, I've mentioned that a little bit, they felt they had to prove themselves over and over again uh, for them to be accepted, even as nurses uh, in the uh, United States. This is the president of the National Association of Nigerian nurses in North America and Canada in uh, ramifications. I talked earlier about the uh, ramifications of us recruiting foreign nurses to work in America. It has a social ramification. First, the weather. Uh, many of these people came from uh, a weather that is different from here. The food, the food, the weather, and uh, individualism versus collectivism. Uh, so uh, it's really, it really impacts them. You know, when you live with a neighbor, they come from a place where neighbors bust in and out uh, to say hi to one another, help each other out. We're caring for children. They don't have to be taking their children everywhere they go. So when they come here, it's a problem uh, to them. Uh, the food, the weather, the interaction with people, uh, the culture of the people, and then le the legal aspect. A lot of, uh, some of uh, the nurses, had, uh, the recruiter took them to court because they wanted to uh, collect more money uh, from them. Um, another aspect is the issue of patients' rights. What you can do, what you can't do. A lot of these nurses don't know much about about it. Uh, the legal aspect of working in America, uh, the legal aspect of patient care. Um, uh, so, uh, so it's, it's a problem. Uh, the ethical aspect. So, um, some of them talked about the issue of raising children, uh, raising children outside the country versus raising children in America is quite different uh, to them. Um, work uh, culture, some of them, especially those who work in the nursing home, they talked about being forced to give patients uh, beer, uh, I mean, alcohol and cigarettes and stuff like that, which is against their religious uh, uh, conviction. So, um, so a lot of ethical uh, problem there for them. Economic, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, foreign educated nurses come to this country uh, because they want to better their economic status too. But they found out that uh, it's not as what they wish it, it is because uh, the money they make by the time they pay their bills, send money back home, they find out that they are, they are not able to make that much uh, money that they thought they would be able to make by coming uh, into the United States to work. But uh, some of them stated that their social status has improved. First, going to school. A lot of, a lot of foreign educated nurses just come here, they are working full time, they are going to school. So that has kind of improved their social status. And when they go back to the, uh, their, uh, uh, their country, you know, uh, people respect them because they have a broad perspective about things than uh, when they left home. So what's the significance of this project? Uh, the takeaway I want us to, uh, uh, I want today is that we will have positive relationship with our foreign educated nurses wherever we meet them. Uh, we need to give, uh, I want to give voice uh, to nurses struggles uh, because uh, some of us might be wondering why is it so, why is it so important for us to know about foreign educated nurses coming to work in America? It is important because it has a lot of economic implication 
because to recruit one foreign nurse is to come and work here is a lot. It's a lot of money, and then because they are because they take care of our patients, it's very important. So we need to know what their struggles are, what their problems are, and we need to know uh, make sure that since they are here, that they have a smooth transition that will help them to effectively take care of the patients that they have come here to take care of and to take care of. Uh, I mean to. Uh, um, successfully have a smooth transition into working in, in, uh, in America and to contribute uh, their part into the success of the society. Uh, so we need to understand what these nurses' struggles are, their journeys, uh, and the journeys uh, of their colleagues too. That is, foreign educated nurses need to know what is happening to other foreign educated nurses. And those of us who are educated here need to know the, uh, what, uh, what is going on with our foreign educated counterparts. Uh, we need to have truthful information. Uh, the foreign educated nurses need to have uh, truthful information to make informed decisions. Uh, hopefully when this project is published, our, our foreign educated nurses will be able to read about it and know what it takes to come to work in another country and then they will then be able to uh, make their decision based on uh, truthful information instead of media portrayal and uh, other stuff that may not be true. Uh, and then we uh, like to sensitize policy makers to multiple and complex ramifications of recruiting uh, foreign educated nurses. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of ethical issues, a lot of legal and economic uh, implications. And that, uh, for example, uh, uh, be, uh, foreign educated nurses being exploited. We need to sensitize policy makers to that so that they can help us make laws that will close gap into exploiting uh, foreign educated nurses. Continuing scholarship, uh, I hope to publish uh, the project in a professional journal, uh, presentation to professional colleagues like Nigeria Nurses Association, Black Nurses Association, uh, where I work, uh, uh, my colleagues at work, um, conversation with boards of nursing and nursing associations and encourage, I will also encourage all nurses to share their stories with each other. What is the vision of uh, foreign educated nurses? The vision is to go back. Uh, one of them stated, my vision is to go back to school. I want to be a doctoral degree holder and go back to my country and use knowledge to help upcoming generations to update their knowledge of this profession. So many, many come here with a vision, with a goal. They want to impact. Uh, their own country and also they want to impact their host country. Uh, we, uh, when I, one of the questions I uh, posed to these nurses was, was it a brain drain? Are you coming here to work or not? They said, some of them said it is a brain, uh, brain game because we are not, we are working in America but we are impacting our country back home. We are able to take back the knowledge we are able to uh, use that knowledge to help our people back home while we are also helping our host country. References? Thank you. <laughs> I have one question, Salate. Okay. This is, you know, we all can just see the passion just radiating <laughs> from, you, from you. What was maybe one of the hardest things to have the nurses tell you about when they were telling their stories? Was there anything that was difficult to hear? Definitely, a lot of things. Uh, first of all, the discrimination. You know, a lot of us think that, you know, uh, the discrimination is overblown. For example, some of us, uh, when I, when, you hear about it when somebody says, I have to prove myself. Some can say in their mind, I have to prove myself too. But when a foreign educator says, I have to prove myself, 
that is uh, very well meant, you know. The discrimination of you coming to work, you know, assign a patient and somebody just says, I don't want you. You haven't even cared for that patient. That person hasn't seen you. And it happened not only once, not twice. So that's very hard to hear. Working with a colleague that always reports you uh, to the supervisor that these are people that, you know, the work is everything they have. This is not their country. They are supporting people back home. Once their job is, done, is gone, it's very difficult for them. You know, uh, a colleague told me a story about she, uh, a, a, a lady who always reports her. But then the lady had problem putting in a catheter. But this foreign educator nurse went and helped the lady to put in the catheter. And that was the end of the foreign educator nurse's problem in that unit <laughs> when she did that. Yeah. Because all of them tried. But these are people who are experienced. This is a this is somebody who is a midwife. You know, I talked about, you know, people come when they come here, they start from this scratch. Some of them are directors, some of them are working in oil companies, some of them have their first degree before coming here. So when they come here, they're like as if they don't know anything. So when you hear all those kind of discrimination, like, oh, uh, can I talk to somebody who speaks English? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And somebody, you know, you are the RN and, and, they are, and the, the doctor is talking to a, 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 a maybe, a, a nurse assistant or a hawk, you know, it's, can I speak to somebody that speaks English, you know? So those are those things that I hear that is very hard to hear. Sometimes we think it's, it's, it's fable when we talk about uh, discrimination, struggles, but it made it real to me. And when we come together, people you hear the same thing all over again, people saying what they are going through, and they are still going through it, you know? So that's one of those things that is uh, difficult uh, to hear. But they are very strong people, you know? And despite that, a lot are uh, moving on, you know, educationally and otherwise. Malaki, are recruiters still bringing Nigerian nurses? Um. Well, I believe so, but not. I'm not aware of any in Minnesota because when we came, we were like, well, about 50, you know, that came in, in one year, and then wow. uh, two uh, big uh, uh, nursing home recruited us, and then um, so. But after that, there was a lot of problem like you would have heard done in my presentation uh, with the recruiter collecting double money and, and stuff like that. So after that, I did not hear about that. But with my literature search, I know that recruiting of foreign educated nurses is still very well alive. <laughs> yeah, it's still going on. And those problems are still there with the recruitment. Yeah, looking at the literature. Yeah. For example, the Filipino nurses, I, I read about them during my literature search. What happened to the Nigerian nurses, the same thing is still happening to them. So other states are still recruiting, but I'm not aware of uh, any active recruitment in Minnesota, like it happened that time, yes. Malaki, are there other countries such as America that are recruiting foreign nurses, such as England mm -hmm. or other European countries that are doing, unfortunately, some of the same behavior that happens here in the U.S.? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yes. But when we went to Namibia, uh, we met nurses from other African countries in Namibia. And then uh, England, you will find them there. Ireland, you will find them there. Um, East Africa, you will find them there. So definitely um, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates, you find foreign educated nurses uh, going in there to work. Yeah, definitely different parts. One of the things that always impressed me about you, Falaki, and I 
in our classes, which are pretty much discussion-based, you have a strong voice. And you are very articulate, and you speak your truth, and you speak it clearly. And I think you're a, the perfect person to carry this on, to express this. The other part of this that you said in the beginning that I think we're really missing that you can help us with is how we can learn from foreign educated nurses about how we can do things differently, how we can be more relational, how we can use different modes of interacting with people even. So that will be a next challenge for you as well, in addition to this strong voice about the truth here. Thank you. Thank you.